Hey everyone, we're gonna talk a little bit about generalizability in quantitative research. So let me share my screen with you here. And uh, so one of the first components that we talk about with, 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 uh, quant with generalizability in quantitative research is population validity, which really uh, is focused on how random your sample is, but more importantly, in my opinion, how representative your sample is. And we'll talk a little bit about randomness and maybe a little bit of the, 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 the myth of randomness. So keep in mind that what's really key is that when we are saying that our study is generalizable, we're saying that the people in our study represent who they're supposed to represent. So when we have a population validity, we have accurate results, our results should be replicable. Um, we should be able to find the results again and again, and this should be a good faith approximation of what we say is happening uh, with the participants, not only the participants in our study, but with who they represent in, 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 uh, in the population of interest. So if I'm studying adolescents with uh, mental illness, then uh, this should be a, a, uh, a good representation and an approximation of adolescents with mental illness. Um, we're always going to have sampling error. All right. And so um, just kind of keep in mind that, that uh, uh, even when we, we do a good job in trying to find a, a, a representative sample, that there's, you know, there's always error. In our studies, and this is why 50% of uh, research in, in in social science in the social sciences isn't replicated. Um, you know, sometimes what we're trying to measure is so nuanced, is so sensitive. Uh, things like wellness and depression and grief and achievement um, and multicultural competence. Um, these are constructs that are really difficult to uh, assess and they're sensitive to change. And so sometimes that's why our findings may not be uh, replicated. So when we're trying to uh, create a study that is generalizable, the first thing we wanna think about is who our target population is. You know, who, who do I wanna know about? And then based on that target population, who do I have access to that's a member of that target population? So my accessible population should be representative of my target population, All right? So when we try and create a study and say that this study is going to be generalizable, we often look at, at randomness and we often look at the common characteristics of the sample. For example, uh, in, in most of the research I do, I don't have a random sample. I have a representative sample and I am very particular about saying, here's who's in my sample. So people can look at my research and go, okay, I see who's in this study. And when I replicate this study, I can see uh, if I want to expand, upon it, or if I want to get a similar sample. And you have to know if there's any bias. So um, state the characteristics of, 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 of who you accessed, and then you know, identify um, any similarities to the, uh, uh, that the accessible population has to the target population. Did you have access to who you intended to measure? So to show generalizability, one more time, clearly describe who you're trying to measure. Define the sampling procedure that you used to obtain your data. And then also, if necessary, provide a completion rate. And people often say, you know, um, it, it's sometimes even hard now, especially with the internet, to, to know how many people had access to your, uh, to your study. Um, that's really difficult to track now, uh, particularly with internet studies. Um, now, obviously, if I'm collecting data from uh, in, in a medical study and I'm recruiting people uh, who meet a certain criteria, that's 
a whole different game. And I can, I can look at people who started the study and people who completed it. But uh, completion rate's really important even in like internet-based research where I'm sending out a Qualtrics survey. I, know, I don't know how many people saw the survey, but I do know how many people opened up the email and chose to complete it, you know, or at least started it and then chose to complete it or not complete it. When we're doing quantitative research, to re remember that generalizability is so much more than, than having a, an adequate sample. Uh, you have to have valid and reliable measures. You have to have uh, a design that truly measures what you're wanting to measure. And then you have the test that, ex that explicates the findings. But notice that the statistical test really means nothing without a strong design, valid and reliable, uh, a valid measure with reliable scores, and a process of obtaining uh, the appropriate participants. So I hope uh, that helps in uh, understanding a little bit about uh, generalizability. Thanks.